Branches stretched to the skies. Those who hope in God are happy and wise. Roots in the earth, branches stretched to the skies. Those who Friends, that paraphrase of Psalm 1 comes to us today. Our roots, as you feel them in the floor, perhaps you might just take a deep breath and feel your roots, your feet connecting to the ground. And then, friends, feel your body, your spine tall. Just breathe into a space of presence, belonging, space of wisdom that's rooted in our bodies as well as in our minds. Let's sing together. Echo after me. Roots in the earth, branches stretched to the skies. Try that. Roots in the earth, branches stretched to the skies. Those who hope in God are happy and wise. Those. Those who hope in God are happy and wise. Roots in the earth. Roots in the earth, branches stretched to the skies. Those who hope in God are happy and Last time. Roots in the earth, branches stretched to the skies. Those who hope in God are happy and wise. And also with you. Welcome to chapel. Whether you are with us in the room or you are online or you are watching us on Facebook. In whatever way you're able to come, we're glad that you are with us. As we begin today, we are going to be celebrating the gift of scripture as we prepare to hear scripture read. We are going to learn a song, and we're going to need those lyrics up on the screen with PowerPoint uh, in just a moment. And we are going to take a moment just to hand the scripture around the room. And I would invite you to do what you are moved to do when it's your turn. You can hold the, hold the Bible up. You can dance with it in a circle. You can bow with it. You can just hold it for a moment and then pass it on to the next person. It depends on uh, what you are moved to do as we give thanks to God for the gift of the word in scripture. Paul's going to teach us a song. And then once we learn the song, we will pass the scripture around, pass the Bible around. By the light of the sacred stories, by the light of the Spirit's fire, help us to discern your word for the sake of the world that you desire. Listen again. By the light of the sacred stories, try it. <laughs> 
by the light of the sacred stories, by the light of the Spirit's fire, by the light of the Spirit's fire, help us to discern your word, help us to discern your word, for the sake of the world that you desire for the sake for the sake of the world that you desire i'll break it into bigger chunks listen again by the light of the sacred stories by the light of the spirit's fire by the light of the sacred stories by the light of the spirit's fire help us to discern your word for the sake of the world that you desire help us help us to discern your word for the sake of the world that you desire i think we've got it let's try it a few more times by the light of the sacred stories, by the light of the Spirit's fire, help us to discern your word for the sake of the world that you desire. Sing it out, friends. By the light of the sacred stories, by the light of the Spirit's fire, Help us to discern your word for the sake of the world that you desire. Maybe there's some harmony in the room. By the light of the sacred stories, by the light of the Spirit's fire, help us to discern your word for the sake of the world that you desire. By the light of the sacred stories, by the light of the Spirit's fire, help us to discern your word for the sake of the world that you desire. By the light of the sacred stories, by the light of the Spirit's fire, help us to discern your word for the sake of the world that you desire. By the light of the sacred stories, by the light of the Spirit's fire, help us to discern your word for the sake of the world that you desire. By the light of the sacred stories, by the light of the Spirit's fire, help us to discern your word for the sake of the world that you desire. One last time, friends, by the light of the sacred stories, by the light of the Spirit's fire, help us to discern your word. Help us, help us to discern your word. One more time, help us to discern your word for the sake of the world that you desire. Amen. For some of us, that's new. For some of us, it's new to get that into our bodies. So I appreciate your moving a little bit with us and learning a new song. A reading from the third chapter of the letter of James, in which the author contrasts divine wisdom with what passes for wisdom. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life 
that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it. So you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it. So you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves, therefore, to the Holy One. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to the Holy, and the Holy will draw near to you. Holy wisdom, holy word. Let the people say, thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. We didn't plan this, but I wonder if we could sing that song a couple more times as we take the Bible back to the back to the table. By the light of the sacred story, by the light of the Spirit, by help us to discern your word for the sake of the world that you Sacred story by the light of the spirit fire. Help us to discern your word for the sake of the world that you desire. For the sake of the world. For the sake of the world that you desire. Amen. Blessed be the divine one, holy mystery and source of all grace that we know, whose wisdom, Sophia, the fourth person of the Trinity, if we are feeling playful, flows into and fills the spaces in our minds and our hearts all the time. And even more so if we are able to clear away some room. Amen. Will you learn a song with me? I realize you just learned one. But I'd like us to share this song together as we explore this passage of scripture. It's a little long, so uh, be gracious with yourself. The goal is not to sing it perfectly the first time or even the third time. The goal is to wade out into the current of this song, stumbling over the words or the rocks, maybe, but allowing the song to buoy you up and carry you along as we consider this text from Scripture. I'll sing a line and ask you to sing it back to me. Oh, wisdom from above. Try that. Oh, wisdom from above. 
O wisdom from below, O wisdom from below, O wisdom deep within the soil of my soul. Try that. O wisdom deep within the soil of my soul. Show me your holy way. Your turn. Show me your holy way. All selfishness and envy take away. All selfishness and envy take away from me, from me. That in my life a harvest, your turn. That in my life a harvest of righteousness and justice, of righteousness and justice may be so, may be so in peace. In peace. Listen through once and we'll sing it together. O oh, wisdom from above, O oh, wisdom from below, O oh, wisdom deep within the soil of my soul. Show me your holy way. All selfishness and envy take away from me. That in my life a harvest of righteousness and justice may be sown in peace. Right? Oh, just try that with me. We'll stumble through it together. Here we go. And, O oh, wisdom from above, O oh, wisdom from below, O oh, wisdom deep within the soil of my soul. Show me your holy way. All selfishness and envy take away from me. That in my life a harvest of righteousness and justice may be sown. In peace. One more time. Let's try that. Oh, wisdom from above. Oh, wisdom from below. Oh, wisdom deep within the soil of my soul. Show us your holy way, all selfishness and envy take away from me, that in my life a harvest of righteousness and justice may be so in peace. Nice. In a few minutes, I'm going to invite you to listen, to reach deep, or try to discern any holy wisdom you can for us in this moment that we're in. This moment, when many of us have spent the weekend watching memorials for 9-11,
Some of us sensing that that old grief rising to the surface has drawn up another more recent grief with it. As Dante Stewart said this week in my Instagram feed, be gentle and attentive. So many people are in a long season of mourning. This moment, when the freedom to make choices about infecting your neighbor with a disease that could kill them, and the freedom to make choices about your own body during pregnancy, are so drastically and publicly in tension with each other. This moment, when the heat of late summer will soon begin to fade, we hope, and the colors of fall will begin to appear, and there may be a few glorious days in which to breathe deeply and to clean up and rebuild in the midst of floods and droughts and wildfires and hurricanes. This moment, when doctors are burned out and frustrated, and teachers are exhausted and attacked from all sides, and pastors are struggling to reinvent something that will suffice as communities of faith. And it is so hard to see what churches and schools are going to look like in the future. What is the divine wisdom, the whisper of Sophia for this moment? And how might this passage from the book of James, from the lectionary, be helpful? Sing with me. Oh, wisdom from above. Oh, wisdom from below. Oh, wisdom deep within the soil of my soul. Show me your holy way. All selfishness and envy take away from me that in my life a harvest of righteousness and justice may be sown in peace. If you know my preaching, or if you've been in my preaching class, then you know that I consider the conversation between the Holy Spirit and the listener, or the gathered community, to be far more interesting and important than what the Holy Spirit may be saying to the preacher alone. So after we give our attention to this passage of scripture, we will share a few moments of quiet, and then we'll see if we, here in this room and online, oh, the one that the, the camera that's closer is that way. There we go. And online, have anything that we feel called to share before we depart. Just something to keep in mind, a way of framing what we're up to here as we delve into this scripture passage. So, James, in the third chapter of this letter, James is calling his readers to show with their lives, to make manifest in their words and actions, the kind of wisdom that comes from above. What we, with our cosmology, might say comes from above and below and beyond and deep within divine wisdom, 
rather than what we usually hear, rather than what usually passes for wisdom in the public square. And James, the author of James, is clear that for him, there are two distinct brands of wisdom. One is pure and heavenly, and the other is demonic and wicked and earthly. One leads to hope and healing and heaven, and the other leads to disorder, division, and death. As part of that, he's got this whole world rejecting everything physical and earthy is bad thing going. It's a perspective that ignores the original blessing of creation and denies the affirmation of embodied existence that we find in the incarnation of Jesus, but it was common at the time, and it's in keeping with the extremely binary either-or kind of thinking that we see in this whole passage. The author of James wants to lay out two very distinct paths for his or her listeners, as if there were only two, as if there were two and they were both paved and they were clearly marked with signs that said this way or that way, as if we don't all stumble along among twisting, winding, crisscrossing paths from day to day as we try to navigate pandemic weariness, and microaggressions, ours and others, and online disagreements in which there is no tone of voice or body language to give us a clue, and utility bills, and so much else. All the while hearing the voice of Jesus just over the next hill saying, follow that path. As we are trying to catch up, clambering through thickets and saying, I'm coming, I'll be right there as soon as I find a path, any path. The two paths thing that we find here, as well as in early Christian documents like the Didache, has always struck me as simplistic and not really true to life the complexity of daily living. But James totally doubles down. He is really working this angle. This particular all or nothing way of approaching life, two kinds of wisdom, two distinct ways of living, earthly versus heavenly, proud versus humble, God versus the devil, on it goes. It's a little too neat. It's, it's a lot too neat, actually. In my life and the lives of those I observe anyway, both in the public square and among my family and friends, our attempts to walk in the way of wisdom and in the footsteps of Jesus are rarely, if ever, clearly delineated. We are more likely to be a well-blended mixture of good intentions and excuses good intentions and excuses of wise choices and good deeds and an hour of scrolling through sad excuses for wisdom that are provided on our phones in a steady stream. Like our blended classrooms and our hybrid courses, our lives are more likely to be more than one thing. Days of mediocre performance and mumbled complaints, punctuated with a few flashes of saintly brilliance. When we return the neighbor's dog from eating our garbage, or we actually show up at a city council meeting to talk about policing. Even so, even though James may be overselling the categorical distinction between the wise and the foolish, if we can get past his wiser than thou attitude, 
and his tendency to overstate his case, there might still be something in this passage that may be useful for us for this moment. Some glimpse of the author's own faith journey. As we learn to discern divine wisdom for our moment and embody it in our actions and words. Verse 13, show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness, born of wisdom. In spite of the brutal era in which he lives, in spite of the Roman occupied territory from which he is writing, in spite of all that he has been through with Jesus, the author of James leads with gentleness. It's remarkable when you think about it. There's not a lot of market for gentleness these days. It doesn't win elections. And it doesn't, certainly doesn't sell streaming video subscriptions. Whether you are opposing terrorism or you are opposing injustice on the streets, gentleness is not at the top of anybody's list. But it is here for James. Gentleness born of wisdom. Do you want to embody the wisdom of the divine in the world? Find a way to act with gentleness in the midst of all that. Not weakness, not lack of resolve. That is not the same thing, though gentleness is often labeled as both of those things and more. James is talking about intentional acts that come from a place of compassion, a place that is in touch with that steady, non-anxious wisdom about what God longs for and God is always seeking to bring near in an extremely messy world. What does it actually look like? to engage in acts of gentleness in a world that insists every day that gentleness is for suckers. Doesn't it just look like foolishness? Wouldn't a, a quick witty comeback, a mic drop, or the ability to shout someone down be more useful? Right now in this moment, what does it mean to risk exposing the soft underbelly of kindness? Knowing that as a nation, we produce more guns and own more guns per person than any country in the world. Learn from me says Jesus in the Gospels, for I am gentle and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Wow. Verse 18, holy wisdom, not the wisdom that springs from envy and selfish ambition, but the wisdom that seeks the common good, the realm of God coming near, that wisdom is first pure and then peaceable. And a harvest of righteousness, or we might say a harvest of justice, is sown in peace for those who make peace. Here at Eden, we are good at Isaiah 32, 17. The fruit of righteousness or justice will be peace. You want peace? Work for justice. Justice is the path to peace. No, justice 
no peace. We're good at that. That is why James appears to have it the wrong way around. He says, if you sow peace, you will reap a harvest of justice. How can that possibly be right? How is that divine wisdom? What does James see that I don't see? Because it looks to me like every peaceful movement for justice in history, in the history of the world, has been a bunch of people singing and marching and then getting shot or arrested or disappearing in the middle of the night. What does James know that I don't know? Could it be that the author of James learned something crucial in following Jesus who set his face toward Jerusalem, as Luke says, and risked leading nonviolent direct action in the streets? Could it be that because the author of James was part of a movement that continued to resist empire and social hierarchy after Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection, that continued to gather, continued to share food and healing in spite of threats, refusing to offer libation to the emperor when they met, sometimes at the cost of their lives, could it be that through all of that, the author of James gained a costly kind of wisdom about resistance that is grounded in the liberating love of God. And could it be that James does actually have some wisdom that we find difficult to see we who are as wise as serpents and yet are still immersed every day in the dominant cultural narrative of violent, greed-driven greed infotainment. What James would call unspiritual, demonic wisdom. Could it be that there is a subtle, even holy wisdom about the way of nonviolent resistance, of working for just peace as a path and a practice of faith. Oh, wisdom from above, oh, wisdom from below. Oh, wisdom deep within the soil of my soul. Show me your holy way, all selfishness and envy take away from me. That in my life harvest of righteousness and justice may be sown in peace. Seems like such cheesy, flimsy wisdom. Is it any wonder that Paul said to the Corinthians, do not deceive yourselves. If you think that you are wise in this age, you should become fools so that you may become wise. As foolish as it may seem, James says this kind of wisdom is a gift from God, a risky, 
vulnerable, luminous, and unlikely gift in the midst of all you are going through in this moment and all that we are going through together. So what does this passage have to say to us in particular at this particular time? What conversation might the Holy Spirit be trying to begin both within each one of us and among us? We're going to spend a few moments in silence. And I would invite, I would invite you to open your heart to the wisdom of this passage for your life in particular. Then, after a brief prayer, I will invite any of us who feel called to speak to share what you discern as the wisdom of this passage for the Eden community right now. If that invitation comes and no one speaks, that is not a crisis. If you are generally the first person to speak in a group discussion, or if you tend to be uncomfortable with gaps in the conversation, then I would invite you to maybe jot down your thoughts in writing and sit with them for a moment before you share them with the group. If you tend not to speak and doubt that you have anything of value to add, I would just remind you I would ask you to keep in mind that the spirit blows where it will. If anyone ends up speaking online or in person, that will be a gift. And if no one ends up speaking, we will still have done what we intended to do. So let us first spend a few moments in silence in discernment. I'm going to pray a prayer for discernment. Let us pray. You are the wellspring of wisdom. O holy and eternal one. You are the bringer of clarity and understanding. In the midst of struggle 
and this man. We give thanks that wisdom lives with you and that you love her. We give thanks that in every generation she passes into receptive souls, making them friends of you. In this time of struggle and uncertainty, in this moment of communion, as we pause to connect more deeply with you, we are pouring oil upon the crust kitchens of our shattered hearts and shaking out the dust veils upon our minds that we may be open to your spirit and welcome wisdom with open arms. Show us what is best, what is wise in this moment for this day. Give us words of clarity, courage, and encouragement to speak to one another. We pray with confidence and trust because you blessed, because you are blessed son. Amen. Whether you are present online or you are present in the room, I would ask you, are there any words for the community? Is there anything that you think this passage is saying to us right now? If you want to share something, I will hand the mic to you so that the people online can hear as well. And if you are online, um, just wave at me and be glad to give you a chance to speak. Perseverance and showing up are coming to me as peace. Uh, I'm reminded by looking at Reinhold Neighbor over there in the window uh, that nothing worth doing can be achieved in our lifetime so that we live by faith and we live by hope and we live by love. Anything else? I was reminded in the silence that any frustration and hurt that we may have in this season so easily turns into aggression. That gentleness requires that we as a community tend not only each other, but also tend our own internal frustration and grief for the sake of how we treat each other. Um, I've learned that um, wisdom 
comes from God and he fills my heart. And through the conviction of the Holy Spirit, I give out peace to those I relate with. And I'm really blessed so much. Thank you. Anything else? to Dr. Grundy's song. He talked about the left and the right, but the song and even the opening song talked about the branches extended up and the roots extended down. And I wonder whether that might be an image to nourish us as we leave, our roots firmly grant, planted in our arms reaching out. Friends, let's stand together. A wisdom from above, a wisdom from below. And if you want to pray this with your body, Invite that to be in this space to you. Oh, wisdom from above. Oh, wisdom from below. Oh, wisdom deep within the soil of my soul. Show me your holy way. All selfishness and envy take away from me. And here's our prayer. That in my life, a harvest of righteousness and justice may be sown. That in my life, that in my life, a harvest of righteousness and justice may be sown that in your life that in your life a harvest of righteousness and justice may be sown and last one that in our life together that in our life a harvest of righteousness and justice may be so in peace, in peace, in peace, in peace, in peace, in peace, in soup lunch today uh, for anyone who wants to go to the commons and have some soup we invite you to join us for that it's rally day already tomorrow uh, so uh, hope that you can join us for that online or in person may the grace of our savior jesus christ and the love of god and the communion of the holy spirit be with you now and as you go forth from this place to live in wisdom, gentleness, and peace. Amen. And let all the people say,